Well, why don't we just go ahead and start and we'll call the roll and yeah, then we'll. Is it turned off? Yeah, it's on. Okay. Great. It's been on. Meredith. Here. Bevel. Here. Bryant. Coleman. Ferris. Freeman. Here. Gillis. Here. Kidd. Taylor. Wyatt. Here. Copenhaver. Light. Here. Gibson. Here. Day. Dooley. Here. Smith. Neff. Cooper. So, first order of business will be approved for the minutes of our May 19th meeting. If y'all take a second to look over that. Got any additions, deletions, changes, questions? And if not, I'd take a motion to approve. So moved. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Um, I don't want LJ to miss out on the grant's request, and so we'll kind of shift around uh, a little bit. Um, I think one of the things that I would, would say, of course, I, you know, we get any time, as I understand, any time we have a division of a lot, which is a creation of a new lot, and or any time we have a commercial application for construction, it triggers the stormwater management plan. Stormwater management plan consists of like enclosed drainage, curb gutter, retention ponds, and that kind of stuff. And so the city council, I guess, is the one that adopted the rules. I think maybe we made a motion, is that right, Craig, sometime back, to adopt stormwater plan, and that uh, approved by the city council. And so that's kind of where we're at right now. Right. The, <clears throat> this committee back in uh, 2007, 2008, 2009, I think it finally, uh, council finally adopted it in like January of 2010. The, city ordinances on stormwater. Um, there had been some earlier ordinances that had been passed, but there had been a moratorium placed on them and they were just kind of sitting idle. But I think in January, it may have been February 2010, our cor current ordinances uh, went into effect. Um, and they were recommended by this board to the city council to be adopted. Mm -hmm. And this board is the variance committee for those right. ordinances. So the, so the council, <coughs> creates the, the rule, whatever, and then we can tweak it on an appeal for something that comes, comes before us. Come on in. <coughs> so us members of the board uh, are appointed by the mayor, and I think we have, a, you want to introduce yourself, sir? I think you're going to be our newest member next month, is that right? Right. I think he's going to be joining. I think the mayor has appointed you to yes, serve sir. on the board, yes, sir. and probably our next meeting yes, we'll uh, have him have him here. So, welcome. Thank you. All right. Um, we want to go to some old business. We got any old business we want to conduct first? Anything? <laughs> Nothing? Okay. No, we're still working on... Uh, not heard anything back from our application on our uh, truck yet. There you go. <clears throat> we, we submitted a pre-application for uh, a vacuum truck yeah, back a okay. month ago, I guess, for a van. But we've not heard back on submitting a full application for that yet. Okay. And I, I'm not aware of any other old business that's, but we're still working on the buyouts uh, on the four flood houses that we have that grant. So yeah. that we've got. We've got two, two, and I called the other two, and they're not interested. So we got two of them have accepted our offer to purchase. So. Okay. So you can count LJ is here? You can say he's yep. here? I'm rarely late. <laughs> <laughs> I have an excuse, but it doesn't matter. 
Okay. Yeah, you can go ahead and give me an excuse, but we really don't care. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, so, LJ, we're down to the new business, which is variance requests. We got, I think there's three, but there's like two different parties requesting uh, the variance requests. Uh, 2610 Nestle Way and 2801 Great Dane Drive, uh, City Water and Light, and she's going to abstain from, from voting on this. Do you want to introduce your folks or however you want to <laughs> present your sure. branch request? Can I just do that from here, Rick? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we got Slade Mitchell. Uh, Slade is, has worked on this project from the get go, probably been working on this whole project for a couple of years, I guess. Maybe longer. Uh, then Chance Smith, Chance is in their engineering department, and Chance is going to be the project manager during the construction project. Uh, and I think most of you know me because I'm old and been around for a long time. Now. Uh, we we appreciate you all. And John is here on our behalf. John is working actually with the uh, contractor that's going to be constructing the project. Uh, he's the engineer for them and, and kind of, I guess, pursue our line too indirectly, uh, helping us with this. But, uh, first of all, I want to thank you all. You know, Rick and I, we served on the Solid Waste Board together for a long time, so I know volunteering for uh, groups like this takes a lot of time and effort. So as a resident of Jonesboro, I think you all need to be, uh, get a pat on the back. And it only takes a lot of time and effort, so we appreciate that. Um, to talk about our solar project just a little bit, it's, we've uh, estimated it's going to cost, the land cost and everything, a little over $15 million. We're very excited about the project. It's going to bring clean, renewable energy our customers and, and play a role in uh, replacing some of the coal capacity that we anticipate losing uh, in the coming years. Uh, it's, it's not, certainly not uh, the only thing we'll need to do to replace that coal, but, but it's the first step. And so we're excited about the project. Uh, in order for the project to move forward with permitting, uh, we would need this variance. And so that's what we're here to talk about today. So, you know, when you, I'm sure you all uh, are familiar with the ordinance, but when you read the ordinance, it says that uh, variances could be issue upon showing a good sufficient cause and determination of failure to grant the grant should result uh, in a, an exceptional hardship. So what are the hardships to this project if the variance isn't granted? Um, well, first of all, uh, we're looking at roughly about a half a million dollars, John and I think, uh, to, uh, to close those ditches and then put, put the concrete pipe in there. And, and, you know, if it brought benefit to the community, to the area, um, you know, the cost benefit if it were justified, then hey, that's that's cool. But when you look at it, we're in the industrial park and all the other ditches that I'm aware of that I can think of for the most part are already open. Uh, so we don't really see a measurable benefit to our customers, to the residents of Jonesboro and businesses of Jonesboro to close those ditches in this case uh, because the half million dollars we don't see that there's going to be a measurable benefit in this case to close these particular ditches. Uh, one other thing, and actually instead of a potential benefit do this, uh, we feel like there could be a potential negative, and what that is, I don't want to get too much off into the weeds, but these solar panels, they track the sun, so when the sun comes up in the morning, they're tilted to the east, and as the sun travels across the sky, they slowly during the day tilt to the west and follow the sun to maximize the energy output from the solar uh, facility. So when those panels are at full tilt, uh, the design of our facility, the pilings on which these panels sit, um, they're, the height of those things uh, account for what the floodplain elevation is. So when those panels are at full tilt, the very bottom of the panel is just barely above the floodplain. So, uh, you know, while we don't anticipate that it would impact the whole floodplain for the area, there, when you enclose the ditches, obviously you've got to put inlets for the water to come off of our property and into the, those pipes. And so we think there would be potential to actually slow down water coming off of our site, which What's the significance of that? Uh, it very likely could cause a total redesign of our project, having to install uh, taller pilings to get those panels up a little bit higher. <coughs> and that's, you know, in this COVID environment that we're seeing, you know, who knows what taller pilings could do to the, to the cost <coughs> and scope of a project, not to mention the additional time for design. So, uh, you know, one of the other requirements of the variance that I just familiarized myself, we have with this uh, ordinance over the last few weeks, but is that it doesn't do any negative if this grant, if this grant were granted. And, and we certainly don't see any impacts, negative uh, 
uh, negatively to the area, to folks downstream. Um, you know, when our solar panels go in, we're still gonna have a grassy soil area underneath. So to, to us, the runoff off of our property is gonna be very similar before and after uh, our project is completed. So uh, we respectfully request that, that the committee Grant our variance, and Craig and I have talked about it. Craig, I don't want to put you on the spot to put words in your mouth, but but, uh, but we feel like, and I'll let Craig disagree with me, uh, we feel like the city engineering department and the, the mayor, uh, the city as a whole, uh, is on board for our request. But Craig, by all means, if I spoke out loud, please say so. And I'll be happy to try to answer any other questions. So a couple of other things that I want to, want to mention is in the um, stormwater plan, the curb and gutter, sidewalk, sidewalk's not really part of the stormwater plan, but re retention, uh, curb and gutter, and enclosed drainage. So are you asking just to do away with, with all of that or just the enclosed, I mean? Well, in, in this case, I think it's just enclosing the ditches that we're requesting the variance on because I think that's the only thing the city, when they reviewed our plans, I don't think, I think they were in agreement with us. Uh, pre and post development with our project, what we're doing, we're not going in and putting a bunch of paving and things like that. It's mm -hmm. going to change the runoff uh, significantly of uh, pre and post development. So I think the only issue kind of hanging out there, correct, correct if I'm wrong, was what the city had requested, you know, just because it's that's what they're supposed to do. It's in the ordinance to right. close the ditches. So I think, in summary, I think the only variance that we're needing to move forward is for you all to okay the variance where we would not have to close the ditches. So retention ponds and curb and gutter, is that still going to apply out there? The, or the, you guys the tension pond is is not a strict, not every development has to put in a detention pond. It depends on if they're causing or increasing downstream flooding, mm -hmm. um, what the conditions are in the field, what they're doing out there doesn't uh, create additional runoff volume. Actually, they're they're creating more wetted area on their property. Mm -hmm. um, the ground's still going to be grass, mm -hmm. but they're they're planting a bunch of stuff that can get wet. It's actually going to take water out of the system. Right. Um, so, yeah. um, I, I just wanted to clarify. I don't want you. To, okay, we got the enclosed ditch taken care of but then all we got to come back and say well we we need to request this or that so yeah. the only thing the only variance that they need is for the open ditches yeah. mm -hmm. from, from this board i'm yeah. not aware of any other variances that are being sought but. Mm -hmm. and then another thing that I, I might add too and that's why i asked mark young to, with the chamber um <coughs> you know we came up with the recommendation on our stormwater plan which includes all the things we're talking about and there's been a little conversation mark and i've talked several times i've talked to some of the other members it's not up to this committee to change the rules but we could recommend to the city council that we might want to tweak the rules a little bit because i'm i'm all in on enclosed drainage retention pond, curb and gutter, sidewalk in a residential application. But out in the industrial park, like I was doing more, I, ha I would hate to see it become cost prohibitive to provide 500 new jobs to Jonesboro because they got to spend an extra million dollars to do something that cosmetically may look good, but really practically may not do any good. So I think I would, I guess, ask the city council to at least discuss the impact of this and if we could change the rules tweak it enough so that the industrial park so we don't have to keep coming up here and ask for variances yeah. and so i would like to well, and I, I didn't intend yeah. to walk the too bad but if you can give them one minute you know mark and i i mean my old, well 25 years my 30 years i worked closely with recruiting industry starting with nestle uh, and until you sit across that table, uh, it is so, so competitive. You know, Tupelo, Jackson, Tennessee, the cities that we're you know, competing against, you would be shocked at the little bit of uh, you know, negative or additional cost or whatever that, that could push a project away. So to me, you know, I, I don't want to get in the city's business, but I will say this, you know, uh, I would just ask that on these types of issues that cost benefit be looked at. You know, uh, if there's 
benefit there and, uh, and the cost justifies that benefit and by all means. But uh, just, you know, and, and Craig, those folks at the engineering department, they do an awesome job. And we work with them closely. But, but I, I appreciate you bringing that up, Craig. It, it won't maybe miss, it would maybe kept us from being here for this particular variance, but. Yeah. And I'll add to that. Craig and I have had conversations, <coughs> Kevin and I have had conversations over the years. Uh, Rick, you and I have had several conversations. Um, I, I just echo what Kevin said. It's an extremely competitive um, process. We always want the city to do what's right, what's in the best interest of all our citizens, first and foremost. That's what right. I express. Um, applying a standard um, and expecting it to be the same in a residential setting and in an industrial setting sometimes doesn't apply. And this is one of those cases, and I think this particular request is an example of that. Um, and Craig knows this better than anybody in the room probably. There's some huge drainage structures in our industrial park. Um, and so to, to conform with some of the requirements as they currently exist would be an exorbitant cost. So um, that's something I think for us to consider moving forward. So I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah. So, so I'm going to ask LJ to consider creating a dialogue with, with, you know, with people, to appropriate people to see. Because like I said, it's not up to us on our committee to change the rules. You all make the rules. Yeah, and Mark and I talk often. We're going to be in a meeting later today, so I'm happy for us to talk more. I mean, we had a lot of dialogue last fall, and of course we've had change in admin and whatnot, so I think there's been a lot of other things that have not... It's gotten to the back burner, so we need to pick that up, and I'm happy to help with it. Not to, to correct you, but this board does have the authority to make recommendations to city council to change the ordinance. Okay. And that's we actually have one on our agenda today. Yeah. So right. And we, we can committee recommend, can, but they're the only ones that can change it. Right. right. But but it will come from this committee to council. Council won't create the ordinance okay. um, themselves. It'll it'll have to come from a committee to. Public Works and then right. the Council. So okay. this is the starting point for that dialogue. Um, this committee will discuss if there's any any exceptions that they want to make to that particular code section, and then we'll run it through as an ordinance and get Council to look at it and eventually adopt it. But it, it does start here. Okay. All right. Craig, you're not. We wouldn't be setting any kind of precedence by differentiating on the industrial park because there's other ordinances. Differentiate. I'm going off memory, but it seems like there's other ordinances that I've been a part of when they come along, and, and the industrial park was different. Well, we've had sidewalk discussions, which is another discussion. Yeah. So there's several, I think, industrial yeah. discussions. And we, we have codes that apply to different types of zoning, so yeah. I don't know why it would be a precedent that we would separate something yeah. out. And we have exceptions in the stormwater, board, in the stormwater ordinances already. Yeah. Um, this one just exceeds that threshold for meeting all those other requirements but well we will um, I'll say that we'll we will tackle that uh, in future meeting so on your request anything to add I don't think so unless someone else marked anything we'll be happy to answer any questions or try to anybody got any questions I want to look at it I see what you're saying I guess I would uh, we'll put it up uh, like, anybody want to make a motion to approve their request for a variance? So moved. Second. Any other discussion, question? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carried. Thank so you. we'll go. And if y'all want to stay, you can stay if you need to you don't mind, we'll keep the power you. on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you for that. So. Now we'll go to our uh, second variance request, 3914 South Caraway Road. Who's uh, George? Uh, I'm George Hammond with Civil Logic, and I represent uh, Mr. Stan Staten, who is the uh, is a member of C3 LLC and the applicant for this, this uh, request. Uh, our request is very similar in nature to uh, what two of our Mike uh, requested on the very moment. Uh, though our our setting is, is not nearly as large a site uh, and it's not nearly as big uh, a concern as far as the public goes, 
uh, what we would like to do in this area, and we will be appearing before planning commission for conditional use, is to do many stories on a uh, triangular shaped parcel uh, along the east side of Fairway Road. Along the south side of that parcel, running in the diagonal direction, uh, is a sizable existing ditch going on there. And of course, part of our ordinances right now are that all uh, frontage and inside ditches are to be enclosed uh, in drainage. And with the passage of uh, numerous ordinances uh, in, in the last year or so, uh, we found it uh, very enlightening to to meet with staff before we you know, fully embark upon a project. And one of the things that the engineering department uh, brought up to us is right now, crossing beneath Caraway Road, coming out of the Lynx uh, apartment complex are five 72 inch diameter pipes. And the length of our property along that area is approximately 400 feet total. So if we were to extend five 72 inch pipes each 400 feet, that adds a maintenance requirement on the city of Jonesboro of additional 2,000 feet of 16 inch pipe that they've got to maintain long term. So knowing that and, and receiving the input from the engineering department, uh, they suggested, and I don't want to put words in their mouth, I'll let Craig speak for the engineering department, uh, but they even suggested that they might actually prefer that this be re remain as an open channel. That is exactly the reason we're here today, is to uh, hope, hopefully hear that supportive issue and to uh, have this, this variance requested that we will not have to enclose that large drainage. Yeah. I'd love to put you on the spot. So. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I don't know that uh, the uh, uh, pipes would be any more burdensome on us to on maintenance, uh, short term maintenance anyway. Obviously, long term, if when they fail, it might cost more to, to repair them. You know, whenever that might happen. Uh, you know, concrete pipes would, would probably get a lot of lot of years of service out of them before there is an issue to it. Um, but with these larger ditches, uh, I mean, we wouldn't expect somebody to enclose uh, Higginbottom Creek, right. you know, or or Lost Creek or Christian Creek, and and this this finger is a it's a lateral to Higginbottom Creek. Uh, it's a named lateral on our flood maps. It's it's a it's a very sizable channel. Mm -hmm. um, we did some work on it uh, just downstream as it connects into Higginbottom Creek uh, several years ago now. But uh, I mean, there's there's a large volume of water in there. Um, really, enclosing it in my mind is more of an aesthetic thing than anything else. What do you want to see as you drive down Fairway Road? I mean, operationally and maintenance-wise, it's pretty much going to be a wash, uh, really. I, I, I can't think that it's going to be much difference in the cost for the city for long-term maintenance of it. Um, but it's really just an aesthetic. What do you want your city to look like? Do you want your city to be big ditches all the way up to the edge of the roadway or and open ditches along the roadway, or do you want everything enclosed? This committee, when they passed the ordinance years ago, or when they made the recommendation years ago, their opinion at that time was, we want an urbanized development. We want the city to be fully urbanized, underground drainage system, curb and gutter, <coughs> sidewalks. We, we want the city to look like a, uh, an urban environment, not a rural community. Um, and that, that's really what we're talking about here. What, aesthetically, what do you want to see as you drive down through there? Uh, we're about to do a, uh, we're under design right now, a five lane road section that will go down through here. We're going to extend these boxes basically to the right of way line as part of that project. Um, you know, to, at least because we're going to have to accommodate additional road lanes, sidewalks, and all and all that stuff. Um, I think in 
Caraway or Southwest Drive as you drive down through there. You see, if actually that's the main channel of Higginbottom Creek that we cross on Southwest Drive by Shadrack's Coffee. You know, on one side of the road, it's a concrete box or open channel that goes up into a neighborhood that floods. City Water and Light just put a, a pump station in. There's a lot of water that comes down through there. Uh, on the other side, it goes down through Greensbrier, Greenbrier. Um, you know, but that's, that's the same sort of ditch. You know, that's the same. That's what it looks like going down Southwest Drive. You know, if it were enclosed for that first 400 feet between Shadrachs and, and the, uh, used to be town and country insurance. Mm -hmm. I think it's gonna be a bank here before long. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, if that were enclosed, would it look better? Eh, you know, it probably would. But is it is it really gonna stop the growth of the city? Probably not. Is it gonna cost us, you know, more money? I mean, in long-term maintenance, no. I mean, open ditch, enclosed ditch, or, you know, it's gonna be about the same job. Well, one of the questions I had, <clears throat> of course, I've got a diagram over here. So to the southwest, I guess, down this area, that's open. Before you come through the links, that's all open. When you come, the yeah. links is all that lake. Yeah. Yeah. That's the lake. So that's and all lakes. open and through there. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking about enclosing this to this point and when it turns to the east, and it's going to be open from there. And so, go so, Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, is it like four or five, like four before box culvert that comes onto the highway there? It's actually uh, five 72 inch diameter pipes, six, six foot diameter pipes. Right, right. Our next, you know, I, off Glenn's place, Glenn's place. Coming out of the highway there, square. Yeah. Culverts coming. Oftentimes, yes. Yeah, that's what this is. They're not round pipes coming under the highway, I don't think. But how many feet are we talking on the, about? Yeah, on, the, on the website, they're labeled as 72 inches. Yeah, right. Yeah, they're, they're, they're box culverts. Box culverts. I, when I went out there and looked at it, you just talk about Caraway Road or or the ditch behind it or something. That's along the southeast border of that triangular property. Okay, I see you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you always hear about all the stuff in LA, all the other ditches that they concreted everywhere. Ditch gate? Yeah, and I mean, sometimes it's good to have a, a ditch, is it not? That would absorb water and slow the, true or false? Yes. Uh, ditches can have slower flows, but in an, ur in an urban environment, You try to convey water to a point where you can manage it, yeah. and uh, you know open ditches are, and and what we're going to talk about in this next ordinance is is giving us room to maintain these things. Mm -hmm. You know this ditch that's going to be left open. Well, you got uh, there's there's no room to get a piece of equipment down there to it to right. actually oh, do the work. Yeah. To yeah. It. Yeah. There's no buffer right. between it. Yeah. Um, so we, you know. So how is the city going to maintain these things yeah. when you can't get it to them? If you can't maintain them, it's better to have them underground. Particularly once there's many stores. Yeah. Yeah, I agree yeah. with that. Agree and so that, that yeah. that's really what it yeah. is. I mean, if if you have a nice wide open area, sure, an open ditch meandering through there, I mean, it could be beautiful. Slow down flow, improve water quality. That's all, yeah, that was my whole comment. But yeah. when something like this, I see what you're saying. Yeah, make sense. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're either going to develop property as mini storages or we're going to develop it as a park. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I mean, what, how do you want it to develop? Uh -huh. Mini storage is going to gener generate probably more tax revenue yeah. for the city yeah. than that park is going to. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. So we want to move to the detention buffer ordinance? Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the, the key to this is uh, down at the bottom, the design criteria, 6G is what we basically want to add to the city ordinance. And it is essentially what it would do is require a buffer from retention detention facilities from their property lines. What we, what we have is we get a new development come in, residential, commercial, whatever. Mm -hmm. They'll come in and say, okay, I've got a detention pond that I have to put in to mitigate my stormwater. And I, I butt up to these residential properties, but I have to put in this pond. Well, I'm gonna put this pond right up next to my property line and shove it back here in this corner and optimize the space that I can develop. But I end up putting this pond right in somebody else's backyard. It's on my property, but you know their fence used to kind of have a grassy space outside of it that they could you know step over or whatever you know if they need to do maintenance on their fence you know but now it's cut off where they have a five foot deep trench right on the back property line and their fences start having problems when the bank starts eroding yeah. it, it's just not a yeah. good practice to to shove this right up onto your property line and right onto your neighbor's property line so what we want to do is say okay if we want to buffer around the top of your pond off your property line a distance that it's not impacting your neighbor's property. Now, we put in here 10 feet. If this committee said, no, we want to do five feet, that, that would probably be enough. Um, but 10 feet would, would be better, obviously, than five feet. But you want to be able to run a piece of equipment around the top of it to, mm -hmm. to mow if you have Erosion problems, you need to be able to get a tractor around there to, 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 to do work. Five feet probably is not going to give you enough room to do that. So 10 feet obviously would be better. Uh, 15 feet would be even better. But, you know, I mean, how much? That just makes your pond bigger, though, too, right? It you ends up taking up more footprint off the property, not necessarily making the pond volume bigger. You know, that top... 10 foot buffer may mm -hmm. increase the footprint of where the pond goes, but the pond itself is not any larger than it was. But it's you, you'd be taking more acreage yeah. away. Yeah. 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 And so really, when we have these uh, property lines and then we have these setbacks for drainage easements or whatever, and so you could, you could put a building on that, but if they had to do maintenance, they can tear your building down if you encroach on the setback, right? I guess I'm gonna need you to state that again. Okay, so up. when you have setbacks, like for a drainage easement or whatever next to adjacent to a property line, 
you know, builders are not supposed to build across that setback with the risk of you have to come in there and do something, you're in the setback and so they could destroy part of the building to do whatever they want to do. But on a, on a detention pond, if there's a 15 feet setback, say you know, drainage easement or whatever, but what you're saying, they could put the edge of the pond within that all the way up to the fence? Mm -hmm. That's what they do. Okay. Uh, if you think, uh, what's the, the neighbor that you live in, right. Bobcat Meadow came, I mean, this that was the first one, really, was Bobcat Meadow mm -hmm. that, that, that was brought to our attention. They came in and, and uh, I'm trying to think of what the name of your neighbor is. Whitewood. Whitewood. Mm -hmm. All right. So they came in, they built a detention pond, I don't know, three, four acre detention pond, but they shoved it right back into the backyards of those that lived in Whitewood. And they used to have gates that opened up and they were able to step back out of their gate. And, and obviously they were dumping stuff back there. They right. probably shouldn't have been, <laughs> you know, onto their neighbor's property, but you know, but that was where the first, I mean, when they cut that pond, they basically went to the fence and started cutting the slope down. Right. Is the city maintaining those? The city has the long-term maintenance of those. Not the mowing, the daily trash pickup, keeping it pretty for the neighborhood. So the neighbors We're, are mowing it? The neighborhood are supposed to be the ones keeping okay. it. Now, the city will come in if there's a structural problem, if, you know, in the long-term when, when, when it needs some maintenance. Um, the city is responsible for that maintenance aspect of it. So we're talking about this for just residential? The, this is just pulling those ponds off the property line. Right. Regardless of residential, commercial, wherever it is, we just don't want it shoved right up on the property line and what? right onto the neighbor's property. Well, you're talking about, okay, what's this going to do to some of those, I don't know how to, these little bitty lots they have decided they're going to allow in town now. <laughs> well, little bitty lots. I'm uh, not. You know, what do you get for off from? Talking about like the cottage houses? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the ones that you could put 199 down. little houses on an acre of property? There's, there's, there's 12. No such thing. There's 12 per acre. Yeah. yeah. And they may have to do an underground system to mitigate theirs. Or they'll have to put in a pond that'll be 10 foot off their property line. So it's not shoved up onto their neighbor's property, but they'll have to figure that out as they develop those properties. So just, could, for, could. just for clarification, is it 10 foot from the property line to the water of the pond, or is it from a slope of the pond? Because what if you have to build a berm or levee up for your pond? This should say the top of bank, not top of back. Oh. <laughs> Required, but the top of bank or toe TOE of slope of retention to conservation shall be no closer than 10 feet from the abutting property line. So it goes that, it goes that level 10 feet and then they start sloping mm -hmm. down to yeah. the river. Yeah. Yeah. Because all the way around 360. Just yeah. where it butts up to your property Anybody's line. Anybody's property. Up to your property line. When you're butting up to somebody else's, your property mm -hmm. line, you need to be 10 feet off your property line or <laughs> five feet off your property. My preference is 10. But just like a building cannot be built within that, and so a pond cannot be constructed. We could tweak it to address the pond issue because apparently we only address the building issue within that setback or uh, drainage easement or whatever we've got. You know, uh, most of the drainage easements are what 10 feet. I think the city has a minimum of 15. Yeah, 15. Yeah. I was just thinking to get, all right, you're talking about to go all the way around it. I mean, looking at this table right here, what is it? Six feet, seven, eight feet, maybe. I mean, would eight feet be adequate enough? To, I, I was thinking you'd get a truck in an eight foot. Except for erosion is going to occur, and it's going to well, no, diminish true. that. I think, I think you'd be better off with like 10 feet. And rather than having a, just a circle you could maybe be an elongated retention pond to, to, to get the volume capacity that yeah. you need yeah. so yeah i don't like the idea of it putting it right up next to somebody's fence no, I don't either. and then their fence washes away well, whose problem is well, it well and it and it we've had a couple that have come up about they want to do their detention along their 
side property line and then well when does that become an open ditch and not a detention pond because we have a code that says you can't have an open ditch along your property your side lot line but now we're allowing detention ponds right up to the edge of the property line so that this 10-foot buffer would say okay you got to be you got to pull your property line over 10 feet before you can start your detention pond so you're not having an open ditch on your side lot line You've got it. You've got at least a ten foot area in there that's not a ditch up against your neighbor's property. So you have a recommendation for what the language should be? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's written in there. Okay. We just need to correct the the top of bank and or toe of slope of a retention detention facility should be no closer than ten feet to an abutting property line. So this is so this moved. Well, can we, since Craig was agreeable to five foot, can we start off with a lower dimension, like five foot, since this is new, and it could create problems? That way we're not creating as many problems for developers. What problems would it be? It, it just eat up 10 foot of their space, their land. But if there's a drainage easement or some kind of setback there anyway, uh, you, you can't, well, it's seven and a half on the side lots, right? So you got at least that's, seven and a half feet. Yeah, that's for that's a building setback is a right. seven and a half foot in certain zones. If you do that, though, you got ten feet over here and then ten feet over right. here. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you're, you're right. twenty feet off of their property mm -hmm. that that they're having to. That's a thing like a lot. So Jeremy, just a, I know this is not an easy question to answer. But I'll ask you anyway. I mean, do you see this costing one lot in a 30 lot subdivision? Do you see, I mean, what, can you cast any kind of vision? <clears throat> no, I don't know if they would cost a lot. It's just if we do a 10 foot buffer around a pond, it could eat up more. It, it just it affects a lot of other items. And I was, I was leaning towards a five foot buffer. At least we can have it go from no buffer to a five foot buffer instead of just jumping to ten. At five foot, you're not going to be able to maintain it. You're not going to be. That's just what I'm thinking. The piece of equipment. I mean, you're barely going to have room to drive a long board. A, a mini excavator <clears throat> down through there on five feet. You right. know? It's the property owner and the developer's responsibility to maintain everything, anyways. No, not if there's a long term erosion. Uh, structural failures in the in the pond become the cities after adoption after acceptance of the development so uh, eventually they do become the cities except for if they're commercial we don't take over individual commercial ponds but how does this play out in other cities do we know what other cities ordinances are or Jeremy you have any idea all this we, stuff we, we found some language in other ordinances uh, from other cities, some of them were as much as 25 feet, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, um, and those were Arkansas cities or similar no. size no. cities? No. Yeah. But uh, that's how you, and I think I, I'd sent Jeremy an email yesterday about a project he's working on, and I didn't look at the ordinance, and I said five feet. And so he had it in his mind coming in today that it was going to be five feet, and then we popped this open and it says 10. And so I, I'm sure that did kind of get him out of left field, uh, that, that dimension. But, uh, no, I understand, like, if, we, if you have natural ground and you cut down to the pond, I understand the buffer from the property line. But what if we build up a levee or a berm, a levee to, and the toe of the levy or the berm goes down to the property line or we need a buffer on that toe? The, the, the issue with that is now you have a slope that dis, didn't historically slope towards my yard running to my bottom of my fence and we have had issues with that. You need to be able to pull that back far enough so that there's drainage off that that you can get it around without shoving it in onto my property That and that has been an issue. Uh, out here on South Caraway next to, uh, they put in the, oh, what is it, the uh, mini storages next to the barrel vault place. Oh, yeah. Um, they, they did a slope like that. Um, another one is out here on Paragold Highway. Um, 
the same sort of thing, and uh, we've tried to get them to move it over so they could create their a ditch along their property line to get that slope from pushing water off onto the neighbors. So we need room in there to to accommodate these things. How about eight feet? That that little compromise there instead of uh, ten seems like a lot. Well, I'm thinking to. I think our setbacks on the side now are like seven and a half feet with a seven and a half foot be adequate. What, what would be wrong with, I'm, I don't know that, I know enough right now to be prepared to vote on this anyway. What would be wrong with this taking another month to be able to research this and really make a decent decision That's on it? Really we could table it for a month and come back to it next month. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I can see the need, but I don't know exactly uh, to me, it seems five feet is going to be too small. I, I agree. With you that. know, but yeah. So you want to defer this to to the next meeting? Yeah, we've to be honest. We've been uh, when things come in, we've been telling everybody that they need to move these off their property line. Right. And, and uh, it would be nice to have it written so they exactly know what we expect of them. But we're when if something came in today and they put something on the property line, we tell them to move it off of it. We're not going to create that issue for ourselves. So, um, so waiting another month is not going to be an issue for us. So, so Craig, would you do that? So, if, if the, the farm is sitting in the corner of, of their property and then they're developing all this into a bunch of lots, the lots that the, that the developers butting up to that, they're going to have to be ten foot off of it as well. Are they going to be able to come up, <sighs> up right up to those? That's a good point. It, it is more about the adjoining properties of the development, not the lots that they're creating within the development. Say what, say what you said again, Susan, please. Uh, just if they had this big piece of property they put a pond down in the, in the corner, say the southwest corner of that, they're 10 foot off the, the property lines to the, to the west and the south, but then they're putting all these lots back up backing up to that the developer is do they have, have to be 10 foot off of it as well or are you going to let the developer put those lots right up there to it? there are there are some developments where they plot the detention pond into the lots themselves are those lots that butt up to it so the property owners the homeowners that live there actually own the pond area oh. mm -hmm. and right. so there's there's some of those going on um some not though yeah, some oh, some no. not some yeah. some do have a common area that say okay this is a pond. Mm -hmm. um, Layman Crest is that like the one in the back of Layman Crest? I think the property owners own, own to the lake. Um, yeah. yeah. So what you're saying then? You got your ten foot here before you're starting going down. Then you got to your fence. And then you got another ten feet before they can start building. Those be twenty feet. Like that is what I mean, we, it's a side. That's a lot of property. Yeah, I just want to be clear what we were. Well, the, I said uh, this property. this is. I mean, somebody's going to put a property a fence on their property line. Right. They don't want to look at this ugly old pond, and they're yeah. going to put a fence on their right. property line. We we need to be able to run the back of their fence because we don't have easement on their property. Right. We need to be able to run the top of that around that fence right. and right. maintain the pond. Right. Yeah. So if the if the pond bank starts right at where they put up their fence and it drops straight off, we can't maintain right. it. So we do need that area around that pond. I don't think you're going to get that in all developments where they're creating the lots. You know what I mean? We would with this ordinance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's what I was asking. That's what I was asking. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just thinking yeah. about our subdivision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. our, our lots back all the way up to mm -hmm. the top of it. How would this play out? I mean, I know it's not an easy question to answer. I know anytime I ask you engineer a question, I know it's not an easy answer. But uh, somebody's building a three or four unit commercial building, they're trying to be parking requirements, landscape requirements, et cetera. How do you see this kind of playing out? And I know sometimes those can be pretty tight, trying to meet all the requirements. And yeah, well, I mean, to them, it would be still, you're not gonna shove your detention pond up right on your property line and push it off right next to your neighbor so they have to deal with it and look at it. You know. It's, we want it pulled off that property line a lot. Um, there is a code that says you can't store floodwaters within 10 foot of a structure. And so we've already got that in place. So if they're, they've got to at least be 10 foot away from that detention 
area, the, the maximum flood depth of it. And so, you know, we're not bringing floodwaters within 10 foot of the structure. I don't, you know. Do you think this eats up a parking spot or two as you shift footage around? And the yeah, it is. Well, they could always park in the bottom of the pond and move it when it rains. I, personal opinion, we require way too much park. We over park everything here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I think Daryl and I have talked about that. Yeah, you know, let's. I mean, Academy to yeah. park the whole city. So we're gonna do the detention bus. We're gonna talk about that next meeting, yeah. right? Unless you just really need it right now. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna bluff just like I have been for the last year. <laughs> well, I removed my motion. Okay. <laughs> So it did get a second anyway. <laughs> okay, so we had no old business, correct? Any other communication? Uh, if the committee would like, we could we could draft some possible exceptions to the enclosed ditching ordinance for your consideration. I think it'd be fine. Uh, you know, to, Would the highways you know, be a possible exception too? No. Because they're not going to maintain it, right? But, so they're very with, if it's within yeah, the city limits, even though the high, it is a highway, but the city controls. And so the city can request. There, remember that one that we did? That right. Part of the issue I thought was brought up that Brad Smithy likes to to say he can't maintain underground pipes, and he doesn't. But we have underground pipes all the way down Johnson, up north of 141, down Southwest Drive. So he's got underground piping systems in his network, and he doesn't have a vacuum truck either. He has to call you guys and get help if he has something that's blocked up. Same as what we have to do right now until we get our own truck. How's the truck today? We, we have not gotten one yet. We've submitted an application. We've submitted a pre-application application to get one. Okay. Through a, a grant. About a grant. Yeah. 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 So we've not heard back from that yet. Um, so Brad has a hard time saying, yeah, I can close that ditch. Because he can send a backhoe out there and their maintenance guys and clean out an open ditch. If if it's a, a stopped up pipe, then he has to call for help. That, you know, so he he's, it, and Brad Smithy is a, is a, he doesn't like curb and gutter. He likes open shoulders, open ditches, open roadways. That's that is his preference. You know that is not an urban cross section. That is a rural cross section. And Brad lives in Greene County, and that is what he likes up there. But inside the urban setting, it, we want curb and gutters and sidewalks and enclosed ditches. And, uh, you know, to say we're not going to enclose ditches along state highways, uh, I don't think, I would think that would be uh, damaging to us in the long run. I really do. I don't disagree. I just thought that was part of the discussion on the one. That we it, it has been a it top. has been a discussion, yeah. but giving a blanket, you know, because somebody come in on Southwest Drive and say, "Hey, I don't want to enclose the drainage system along here." Even was it Southern Hills Mall? They're they're putting drainage in along the path. You know, why can't you? You know, it's what Brad, what the highway department's problem is, is when you come in, you want to do a hundred foot. You know, if you're coming in to do a thousand feet, they can figure out how to make that happen. It's when you piecemeal little sections is when they really have a problem because uh, they don't know how to really handle it. Uh, they'd rather see you come in and do a quarter mile at one time, uh, and we would too. Um, but yeah, Greg, I think that'd be helpful because I mean, certainly doing something for city water and light on a big multi multi million dollar project that's easy. But then when we give an exception to mini stores and all of a sudden yeah. it's like yeah. where can we yeah. stop exactly. some, yeah. some guys trying to subdivide a, an acre into three lots and we're hard on that guy we're not hard on the mini store yeah, whatever exactly so i think right. it'd be helpful well i think that what we would, could possibly do is for the side lot line ditches we could look at a a drainage area 
you know, if you if you're draining more than, you know, I, don't, I wouldn't know exactly, you know, 40 acres on a side lot line, then we might not make any closing, and it, it may be 100 acres. You know, uh, we'll we'll just have to look at, you know, if you're getting larger than say a, a, a 60 inch pipe, a single 60 inch pipe, or or a six by four box culvert. If you're starting to get into some fairly large ditches that, you know. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, if they came in and, and closed a big ditch to build Indian Mall. They've got a double barrel box culvert that goes all the way through that. Mm -hmm. It was economically, you know, for them to put in this culvert system to develop the property. Um, we just, we could still require that of developers. But that's what he wanted to do. Okay. Other communications? Public comment? Mark? Anything? Appreciate what you guys do. Thank you. Got to. Anything? Well, what do you think? Have we scared you off? Or? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've been looking forward to serving and just ask the patients if I catch up and learn on what all of this means. Okay. <laughs> well done. Sorry. Anything? Okay. Nothing. Nothing. Are you uh, going out for track next week? Or? No. Okay. <laughs> so you had a little uh, walking around with a cane for a little bit, but you're yeah for about another week or so. Okay. All right. Pricey. Okay. Good. Last I word. I've talked enough. Okay. <laughs> All right. Before you leave, I take a motion to adjourn. So it. Second. Second. All right. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Thank you all.